This is Killer Innovations, a show about ideas, creativity, and how you can innovate. Welcome to the Innovator's Garage, where you learn to create your next game-changing killer innovation. Welcome to Killer Innovations. I'm your host, Phil McKinney. We are back here in the studio. Uh, It's been uh, kind of a crazy couple of weeks on the road traveling. If you want to follow what we're up to, uh, just hop on over to the Kill Innovations Facebook page. We're keeping that updated. Uh, we are, as I've been talking about in the previous shows, wrapping up the building of a brand new studio. So we will be uh, posting some videos on that. Uh, that will allow us to actually be more mobile. And while I'm traveling, um, I'm actually stopping and uh, interviewing entrepreneurs across the country to uh, hear their stories about the innovations that they're working on. So stay tuned, follow us, Killer Innovations, over on the Facebook page, or you can follow my page um, over there also, and that's where we will be posting. So let's hop right into this week's show. This week's show is actually kind of an, an, an interesting uh, twist. Normally we talk about a whole variety of innovations, but given that this show has been uh, in production as a podcast since 2005, I could tell all kinds of nightmare stories as being one of the early podcasters. In fact, someone just quoted in a news article that Killer Innovations is the longest continuously produced podcast in the history of podcasting. I guess I get the Endurance Award now that everybody's into podcasting and it's turning into being um, the hot thing. Uh, But I can tell you from the early days, we struggled as podcasters for technologies and innovations that would allow us to get our content and get it distributed. You know, I always tell people I was podcasting before iTunes even existed. Um, but there's there's this need for new platforms to get information out, to share that uh, information around. So today we actually have hope somebody who's actually delivering some tools that is innovating podcasting and just the content of audio content delivery. So. Renee, I just want to thank you for taking the time to join us here on the show. Thanks a lot. Thank you for having me. So Renee is the CEO for CastBox. If you haven't tried CastBox, hop on over. You can get it in the uh, all the app stores. Um, but it's a unique technology that allows you to, to do actually audio searching to really find and get targeted in, into the right content that you're interested in. But before we hop into the whole uh, CastBox piece, I'm interested in getting Renee a little bit of background on you. So where 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 did you grow up? Because you you know you kind of got a little bit of an interesting background on ultimately, yeah. you know, finding your way to Google. But give us yeah. a little, give us a little insight about you. Yeah, actually, uh, I grew up in China, and uh, actually, I have a, a kind of normal childhood. And actually, my I think my how to say that because now I'm in, in the tech industry. I think my my tech experience that starts from college and actually when I was in college my major was psychology and mathematics you know for double major but I really enjoy coding I, I really enjoyed engineering so I told myself how to code and uh, I think I began to develop Android I, I learned Java learned Android development since 2008 and become one of the first group of global you know Android developers at that time and I, I, it was 10 years ago and then I joined, uh, you know, Google first in Beijing, and afterwards I relocated to Tokyo and Dublin. When I worked for Google, I helped, you know, over four thousand developers, you know, all over the world to promoting and monetizing their apps on global scale. Uh, actually, I think it was two thousand fifteen. I was in Japan and really enjoyed my life at Google, but still, you know, I want to do something, you know, out of my comfort zone. So. You know, I thought, okay, I have been in the mobile industry for so many years, and uh, I, I really have good passion on the audio. I think I should venture out on my own. So that's why I quit my job at Google, went back to China, and uh, sold my house. You know, I have a house in Beijing, and I sold them, and which provided the initial funding, you know, for the startup. Yeah, this is basically very very uh, rapid introduction. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, well, that's kind of an interesting background. I don't know too many... Yeah. Uh, innovators, entrepreneurs out there who are, uh, you know, selling their houses to uh, yeah. fund their startups. They, you know, they they may sell their retirement fund or borrow <laughs> on credit cards or whatever. And I can tell you, I did thirteen startups, and yeah. uh, 
I probably went through 25 credit cards to uh, fund, <laughs> to fund my startups in the early days. This is this is the 1980s in Silicon Valley. Wow. So uh, you know, I have a little bit of a of a different uh, of a uh, of a different background. But what was the interest in audio? Why why did why did you focus in on audio? Is your is your uh, the thing that you're going to go off and to really bet your yeah. future on? Yeah, actually, this idea you know of Casual came from my personal need. No, um, actually, there's a lot of time during the day, you know, I can't, I cannot look the, the phone and I'm, I'm, when I'm commuting, I'm jogging, I'm doing chores, you know, I'm kind of like a time saver. I, I also think, you know, time is the only thing that I cannot repeat. So I always listen to something, try to have some input. However, you know, um, I'm not a big, big fan of music. I prefer spoken audio. I'm kind of a, like, kind of like a very, you know, geek person. So. I don't do social media a lot. I, I do not like a big fan music, but I prefer spoken audio. You know, it can be with me on a, it inspires and impacts me. So when I look for the apps, I, I look, I take for several factors, you know, into consideration. At that time, I work for Japan and I am learning Japanese because it's my, it was my first time go to that country. In the meantime, you know, the working language in, in Google are uh, English, you know, but, and in the meantime, I'm Chinese. I want to listen to some Chinese audio shows. So, so to you know, to accommodate my needs, I thought a multiple you know language audio app would fit my business life perfectly. As I said, I'm kind of a geek. I have a lot of devices. You see, I have my Android, and there's my iPhone. I have my iPhone. I have Chromecast, Google Home, Amazon Echo, Amazon Dot. One I watch to Android Watch. And also, even I will request a car with CarPlay or Android Auto when I need to rent, you know, a, a vehicle. So because I'm always, you know, on the move, I want something, you know, across all devices and all platforms, you know, to play my favorite favorite episode seamlessly. And actually, the most important thing is like uh, I think audio is a Pandora box. You will never know what's inside unless you listen. So. I want a, you know, a search engine for audio and also a recommendation system, you know, to, can open the Pandora box of audio. So that's why I started Castbox, which is, you know, global targeted, you know, we have like, we, I think we support more than 70 language now, which is always connected, we support all platform. I mean, Android, iOS, Car, and Google Home, and Echo, and et cetera. And also relevant content, because we just launched a, you know, uh, uh, in audio search function, we already, uh, I'm trying to improve in the, the recommendation algorithm as well. So I want all these things. So this is like the, 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 the main idea why we start audio and I launched the, actually we launched the first version of Castbox at the beginning of last year, actually. It, uh, the first version was developed by myself because it's only me at that time, you know, uh, for the company at the very beginning. Yeah, only on Android at first, but uh, we have a rough start, but we collect a lot of feedback and upgrade the app every week and try to build more platforms. And um, also, I think nowadays we have over 9 million users. Uh, actually, most of the users are still on Android, and but those users are uh, hail from all over the world, you know, across all... Uh, still trying to cross more platforms yeah well this i can tell you story. that I, I can tell you that i am a cast box user on my uh, oh, android phone really? on my samsung phone wow and, wow, it, cool. and, it, yeah. and it plays back very well through my uh my ford yeah. explorer which has android auto uh yeah. in it so <laughs> i was uh, in fact i was listening to my cast box this morning on my wow, 40, on cool, my 45 cool. minute let commute. me know if you, you you think we need to improve and we really appreciate oh, it be, we be, can be, provide be, better yeah, be careful of asking me for recommendations. Uh, <laughs> yeah, you have you know, a whole you, list, right? Yeah, you could. Um, <laughs> you should talk to Eric Ewen, who's the uh, founder at Zoom. He's a friend of mine, and uh, he opened uh, Pandora's box by asking my recommendations for new features in Zoom. So, and we're big, wow. and we're big fans of Zoom. We we are. So, we are, so that's why right. Zoom users. is growing so fast because all your all your feedback. Oh, I don't know. I don't know if I want to take credit for that. Eric Eric's a great CEO, and he runs a great <laughs> operation there. And like I said, well, yeah. Zoom is actually a sponsor of our show. So yeah. Uh, so listeners have heard me you know rave about Zoom. Um, yeah, but, Zoom is uh, the best. It is uh, Zoom is uh, is quite good. So we're gonna take a quick break here, commercial break. Yeah. When we come back, we will uh, pick up the conversation 
learn a little bit more about Castbox, and it's kind of it's it's got this interesting history with regards to, you know, you've raised some significant uh, uh, funding support from a variety of companies. We want to hear more about that, but also we want to talk more about the technology that's really solving the problem of how do you discover? Because it's just hard with given now that all these podcasts are getting out there. So stay right there, Renee. We'll be right back, listeners. Don't go anywhere. We're going to continue our conversation with Wene, CEO of CastBox. Learn more about audio innovations and what does it really take to be an entrepreneur to really get an idea up out of the dirt. So don't go anywhere. You're listening to Killer Innovations on the BizTalk Radio Network. This is Killer Innovations, a show about ideas, creativity, and how you can innovate. Welcome to the Innovator's Garage, where you learn to create your next game-changing killer innovation. Welcome back, but before we hop back into this segment, I want to do a quick shout out to one of our sponsors, and that is Zoom. Interestingly enough, we were just talking about Zoom in the previous segment. We've been longtime users here at Zoom at uh, Killer Innovations, but also I use it in my day job. It's the way that we keep our teams connected from all over the world, no matter where they're at. Literally, I don't know how we would get through work and be as successful as we are without the ability to keep teams connected. So if you haven't checked out Zoom yet, you're probably one of the few people in the world that maybe maybe hasn't heard about it because it is on fire. It's one of the top apps out there. So check it out. Kill Innovations has made available to listeners of Kill Innovations a free account. So you can hop on over to KillInnovations.com slash Zoom, download your free account, and allow you to collaborate with up to 50. That's right, five zero people. So check it out and uh, let us know what you think. But trust me, once you try it, you will love it. So, Renee, let's pick up our conversation. Uh, so you got into this whole audio piece about trying to solve the ability really for discovery of yeah. – uh, of, of the spoken types of content, whether yeah. it's podcasts or audio books or whatever. Yeah. And, and you sold your house to get, to get it started, but you, you've been quite successful at attracting some pretty significant dollars to support yeah. your, your, uh, your efforts. So talk us a little bit about the kind of the growth of the company so far, where you, where you're at so far in that, yeah. uh, in the growth. Yeah, actually, you know, the, the first version is very rough. As I said, it's developed by myself. We have, you know, two apps now on Google Play. One is with the purple logo, have 9 million, uh, 7 million download, and our orange logo, one which is the, the new le- recently launched one with the 2 million downloads. I think it's growing so fast because we, we kind of find the, the product market fit. Because at the very beginning, when people, you know, change their phone from iPhone, I was to Android, they are looking for something, you know, for, for Android to, to continue their podcast podcast listening. So that's why, if, you know, because if you see our feed, ratings on Google Play is good and the interface is very clean. And uh, when users try a, a while, you know, different kind of like podcast, it will keep us and give us a good rating, which make our, you know, the, the index results really high on the Google Play search. So. Yeah, this is, I think most of those people are, most of those like users are, are can join us because, you know, we try to, try to build ourselves better, try to product, try to make a real, real a good product. And, uh, also I think like, um, uh, I think so far, the, as, as I just mentioned, we already raised uh, $60 million. And the last week, we just signed a new term sheet for the DB round because not only us, all the index, all the you know all the investors you know all, all those most very smart those smart people they they began to look really look look good in the audio industry and uh, they look for us and because we are one of the uh, the best player there so and they want to highly you know rely on you know on, on this the industry growth and also they believe that those audio will be in the future because I think 
especially for the technology is growing, especially, you know, the, the machine learning and the natural language process is growing. So make the audio interaction and also making the audio discovery better for, for users, which is impossible in the past. And because all those, you know, the, the echoes, you know, the Alexa things and make, make also make people, you know, have a better, better connection with, uh, with information through spoken audio. I think the companies growth more, mostly rely on, on those industry girls and on those technology improvements. And, uh, and, uh, yeah. And also, as I said, we just launched the in audio search function. I think it's, for me, it's very exciting because I, I think audio as a mysterious black box and a passive way of interacting with others. And the audio industry has been there for decades with no huge progress made. So we are striving to making the most cutting edge technology to move this industry forward, you know, to get more people hooked on listening to audio in a brand new and the convenient way. So yeah, this yeah. is like the new one. Yeah. Well that's great. I mean like you said, you you've raised some significant dollars. You know, audio yeah. has obviously become a big uh, issue as podcasting has become absolutely huge. Um yeah. But like I said, everybody goes, wow, it just popped up in the last year. Yeah, you know, like, I don't know, it's been 14 years in the coming, right? You know, to yeah, get, to get exactly. here to, to get to this point. So what's the future look like for the product? Where where do you think it goes from here? Where does CastBox uh, go from now that you've got audio search in there? What, what, what's, the, yeah. what's, the, what's the vision? Yeah, actually, our vision, in, you know, is making billions of people talking to the internet. We try to, you know, you know, well spoken audio make connecting people and uh, with information. So I think we will still highly rely. I mean, I mean, I had uh, actually there are three things we want to do better. You know, in the in the coming year, in in the in the near future, one is always intuitive. We want to make sure you know the make sure you know the the interface is easy to use we may you know also including some voice commands to make it better for users to engage with content and also we will put more efforts in those in audio search function because we now index not index all of the audio index some of the audio to understand the customer's needs but we will index more audio to provide a better search engine, you know, provide a more relevant search result to, to users according to the keywords and uh, look into the audio. And this is the first thing we will want to have, you know, we want to do better. The second thing is also co always connected. Now we support all platform, but we will uh, continually prove it, including we will support CarPlay and and uh, iWatch for the coming, wor coming version on iOS. And we will support you better on Google Home and uh, home part maybe later and uh, yeah and also now we are using real-time database you know which can seamlessly connecting the the, the subscriptions but we will later think seamlessly uh, you know thinking the playing history and uh, to play the their favorite episode seamlessly across different devices and about always relevant we we are now you know re revising you know the recommendation system we are using machine learning to just provide a better recommendation according to the episode level or channels level or even audio clips level. And yeah, and also, as I said, we support 70 languages. We want to make sure this audio is kind of global things. So we will highly rely on technology to make sure lis listeners can really enjoy, you know, Casper. Yeah, this is the future. Yeah. Yeah. So the, what I want to do, we're going to, have to take another quick commercial break here. When we yeah. come back, Renee, what I'd like for you to do, given your experience of having been at Google, left Google to start yes. your own business, yeah. what advice would you give yourself if you could yeah. rewind yourself back to the start of this? You know, starting yes. something and and raising that money, and then so when we come back from commercial break, I want I challenge Renee to give us two or three pieces of advice as an entrepreneur yeah. starting up from the ground zero. So, listeners, yeah. stay right there. We'll be right back and uh, pick up our conversation with Renee, CEO for CastBox, and uh, talking about audio technology. So don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. You are listening to Killer Innovations on the BizTalk Radio Network.
This is Killer Innovations, a show about ideas, creativity, and how you can innovate. Welcome to the Innovator's Garage, where you learn to create your next game-changing killer innovation. Welcome back to Killer Innovations. Before we hop back into the show, I need to do another shout-out to one of our sponsors, and that is HP. Now, those of you who've been regular listeners of the show, always probably your eyes roll at this point, like, okay, Phil, you used to be at HP, and that is true. But HP and Zoom's sponsorships of Killer Innovations is really about their willingness to support our activities beyond the show, which includes the nonprofits, both HackingAutism.org and Pioneer.Education. So Hacking Autism is working on technologies and therapies and employment opportunities for those on the autism spectrum. And Pioneer.Education is creating curriculums to teach innovation and creativity in developing countries. And our prototype school is currently under construction in the Bugisera region of Rwanda, Africa. And through the support of both Zoom and HP, those monies uh, get redirected to, to do a better uh, level of funding um, for those nonprofits. So I, I want to thank uh, both HP and Zoom. Now, HP specifically also gives us equipment that allows us to run the studio. So, um, you know, if you want to see what equipment we do use to run the, the studio, and we're actually, like I said, in the construction for a brand new mobile studio, uh, that is, you'll love it when you see it. It's under construction right now. Uh, but you can check out what HP is providing us as gear by hopping over to killerinnovations.com slash HP. We're using, for instance, some of the new Z2 workstations, some of the new laptops, um, some new slices, what's called a slice, to run Zoom in the studio. So check it all out. And uh, if you ever, if you need a recommendation on HP gear, drop me an email. You know I answer all my emails. And you can do that at phil at killerinnovations.com. Um, and uh, check them out. And uh, just say thanks to our sponsors for the support for the show. It allows us to produce this content and keep it available to you for free, um, but also for the support they give um, that allows us to put more funding behind the nonprofit charities. So check that out, killerinnovations.com slash HP. So, Renee, let's pick up the conversation. Before we took yeah. the commercial break, I'd ask you to think about what advice would you give yourself if you could rewind and go back when you decided to leave Google and uh, start down this uh, path of uh, developing um, the uh, CastBox application and uh, focusing on audio? But if you were to rewind, now that you've got this experience, what advice yeah. would you give yourself? Yeah, actually, I will tell myself, I mean, at the very beginning once, you know, never, never give up. I mean, I didn't give up, but still, you know, it's very tough when you go through all the struggling point. I think at the very beginning, there's no money, no no people, and uh, actually no very clear, you know, the beginning directions. So, but still, uh, yeah, it's it's really, really hard. But, you know, mm, but if I, if I can come back to talk to myself and say, oh, be easy for that. I mean, when there is um, there's a problem, just uh, conquer them. And uh, sometimes it seems impossible to handle. But if you push ahead for one more day, one more week, or one more month, you will find solutions. Maybe through your own efforts, maybe through luck, or maybe just you know get a little help from time, you know itself. So I think this is the biggest uh, you know suggestion I will give back. So if in this way, I will keep became more calm and. Uh, you know, uh, more joyful, more joyful to enjoy the, the the founder's journey. Yeah. Yeah. Well, the, it's interesting you call it a, a founder's journey, and that uh, is clearly uh, what it is, right? It is a journey. You get your ups, you get your yeah. downs. Um, yeah. But it's but at least you know for other founders, and you know, look, I did thirteen startups before I finally yeah. got my uh, did my IPO yeah. and yeah. Uh, my big my what I would call my first big success as one of the founders yeah. at Tulligent. Yeah. Um, you know, it is about keeping an eye on the, on the prize at the end, you know, yeah. what is, what is, what is that, uh, vision? Um, yeah. and so, you know, so now you're, you're at this point, we talked a little bit about where that, where the, the, the future for, uh, for, uh, for CastBox is. Yeah. How big is CastBox, by the way? So how big is your organization now? Uh, now we have 30 people. 30. We have one office in Beijing and 
fun of it here. 30 people together. Where is here, by the way? I'm not even sure where you're at today. I'm, I'm at San Francisco. We oh. have a, a branch office here. Yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah. Well, of one of these times, we'll have to get together. You'll have to come down to Sunnyvale. Well, I'm not. In, I'm in <laughs> Colorado right now, which is where we're, where I'm head, based out of now. I no longer live uh, full time in Silicon Valley, but uh, yeah. so it's 30 people between Beijing and uh, um, San Francisco, San Francisco. At, yeah, at, exactly. at this point. And yeah. uh, your product now is pretty much available on all the platforms, right? Yeah. So yeah. Um, and I, you know. In fact, I don't, I'm trying to remember how I got recommended CastBox. Somebody somebody recommended it. Wow. And when you're a podcaster, you're always like, okay, I'm going, here's yet another podcast app, <laughs> right? And the first thing, if you're a podcaster, you're going to search for your own podcast. Is yeah, it in there yeah. kind of a thing? <laughs> and what's interesting, what actually I like about CastBox as a podcaster is, is when you look up, it actually tells you how many people in CastBox has your podcast bookmarked, right? Yeah. So I was quite surprised. I was like, wow, okay. So I can actually see how many within CastBox are, uh, are listening to the show. So that was, that was, that was, it was kind of a nice little touch as a, uh, as <laughs> I a, I, as a podcast. I will tell our operation people to, to feature your show after they see <laughs> <laughs> you, will, you will see the big jump from CastBox. <laughs> You know, a lot of like uh, um, podcasters now say because they are kind of using Libsyn or some other third party hosting platform, they say now for some shows, Castbox is the number two source. Uh, I mean, after the iTunes. So I think I, we should promote. I think, you that's, know, the, I think that's probably where I, where I saw it listed because I'm on Libsyn. In fact, yeah. I was customer number five for wow. Libsyn. So I was on Lipson approached uh, approached me in the early days to use my show as a test because there weren't that many podcasters out at that point. So I was customer number five on Lipson. So yeah, I'm, okay. So I've been a Lipson customer for uh, you know you know for, uh, forever. Yeah, yeah. But I think that's where I think. But I think he's right because you on on those tools you can keep track of. Yeah. And that's how I know countries, right? So in the case of this show, fifty five percent of the listeners are in the are North America, um, U.S., Canada. 45% yeah. and it goes um, UK, Ireland, Australia, New Zealand, India, China yeah. are kind of yeah. the top countries for my show. Yeah. Um, but it's a great tool just to know who's listening and what are they listening to. Yeah. But what's really nice about your tool, though, is is people can share clips. They don't have to yeah. share the whole show. The one feature yeah. I really like is the fact that someone gets someone just hears something really interesting in a clip. They can just yeah. share the clip with friends. So it's yeah, kind of like, right. So it's like, yes. ship, you know, sharing a URL, you know, that I can, Hey, this is something you got to look at or to read. You don't have to listen to a, cause in my case, yeah. the show is 42 minutes because we're on live, you know, we're on live radio. Yeah. Um, but that, uh, that works out well. So yeah. Renee, if people want to keep up with what you are doing and what you're working on, where's the best place for them to keep track of, of you and your activities? Yeah, I think uh, people can send me email, you know, at renee.wang at castbox.fm, R-E-N-E-E dot W-A-N-G at C-A-S-T-B-O-S dot F-M. And, you know, I love engaging with our listeners. Uh, and meanwhile, you know, users can also, our listeners can also, you know, leave a comment on this specific episode, you know, of this, you know, great podcast of, you know, of killer uh, innovation on um, our Android version or desktop version, we have a common area there. Mm -hmm. We can discuss and uh, you know uh, have a conversation there. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And, and actually, I'm going to encourage the listeners because I checked; nobody's ever posted a comment in Castbox <laughs> yet on any show. So there's here's your test. You know, you can post your comments, and I'll uh, we'll we'll engage in the conversation. I'll also have all <laughs> these links over at KillInnovations.com. So. Uh, uh, we can uh, you can get connected and, and track Renee um, yeah. uh, directly on the email or uh, through uh, the Castbox uh, you yeah. know website and check it out. You know I know everybody gets gets their favorite podcast app, but I'm excited about the level of innovation that's being brought to audio because it has been pretty stagnant um, for quite a while, right? It's you know just cranking out an MP3 file. So Renee. I want to say thanks a lot for taking Thank the you. time to join me here in the show. 
And I uh, wish you guys the best of luck. Keep on innovating. Those of us yes. in the podcasting world need um, those innovations. So I greatly appreciate it. And listeners, check it out. Hop on over to CastBox. Uh, download that app. Check it out on your device. And uh, let Renee and I both know what you think Thank of it. You. And with that, thank you. thank you, Renee. Listeners, thank we'll be you. right back with a wrap-up segment. We'll talk more, a little bit more about what's coming up on the show and future guests. So don't go anywhere. And uh, we'll continue this conversation. And you're listening to Kill Innovations on the BizTalk Radio Network. This is Killer Innovations, a show about ideas, creativity, and how you can innovate. Welcome to the Innovator's Garage, where you learn to create your next game-changing killer innovation. Welcome back to Killer Innovations. As we wrap up the show for this week, I just want to give you a, a little bit of my thoughts on this interview with Renee Wang. Now, Renee is the founder and CEO of CastBox. We just listened to her for the last three segments. But I want to point out some things that I'm really impressed about after having interviewed Renee. And that is the fact that here's a woman who had a very successful career as a technologist at Google who basically walks away to do her own thing. And in this case, going into and innovating in a technology area where if you ask most people, they would say there's no room for innovation. Audio is kind of this old thing. It's kind of dead. There's really, you know, not nowhere to go with it. And she was determined, given her own personal passion for getting information and being able to listen while doing other activities, uh, like many of us that are really into podcasts, being able to do it while you're driving your car, exercising or whatever. But many people have just given up on that there's much room to innovate inside of audio other than record the audio, produce the MP3, post it, um, you know, update iTunes or Google Play or wherever your show is going to appear and then off it goes. Here's somebody that says, no, I'm going to innovate in an area that most people don't think there's an opportunity to innovate. And with this audio search feature that they've just come out, it is quite interesting. So, so here's somebody that not only believed in it, gave up their career, started a company, wrote the application themselves, and sold their house in order to keep it alive, and then went off and now has raised literally tens of millions of dollars to fund CastBox. So again, if you haven't tried it, check it out. If you've got feature enhancements, let Renee know she's truly interested in how to improve that platform to make it as good as possible for listeners and also producers of shows. Um, and I'd be interested in your thoughts on, on that application. But it also begs the question on, are there other technologies that are out there that most people have written off, meaning there's really not a lot of innovation opportunity in it, that still has opportunity. This is just one example of overlooked innovation opportunities. If I go back to when I first went to HP, my first task was to innovate to help in a turnaround process for a money losing division, which was the PC division. There's not much money in PCs. There's no room for innovation. All PCs and laptops are the same. It's all just about cost reduction. And we went in and we innovated. And we created new ultra thins, ultra lights, um, new technologies being embedded in, et cetera. And we took a money losing division that was losing a billion and a half dollars to a division that was making three and a half, four billion dollars in profit. And so... Um, the question I have for you today is you think about innovations within your teams, your organizations, or what it is you're working on. Ask yourself the question, is there an innovation that's overlooked, meaning everybody else has written it off, whether it's Renee in audio, 
whether it was HP and laptops and uh, PCs back in uh, 2007 um, time frame. What is in your technology, your industry, your company is an area for innovation that gets overlooked. And trust me, those can be huge and significant wins. So spend some time, take a break, and just think about what are those innovation opportunities that people have written off, saying that there's no room for it, and then go at it, and then go at it hard. Now, I'm not telling you to, to mimic what Renee did and sell your house, but there's opportunity in there if we really take the hard look and do the impossible. And that's what innovation is all about. You know, the one lesson that I've learned over my career of innovation is, is that the impossible is possible if you're willing to work it and work it hard. So with that, let's wrap up today's show. Uh, I want to put a plug in for getting you involved in the innovators community. The innovators community is an opportunity for you to engage not only with me, but uh, Kim McNicholas and others who you've heard on this show um, in a, an ongoing conversation and an ongoing community. You can find out more by hopping over to theinnovators.community. And you spell out the whole word. So it's theinnovators.community. Over there, it's a private Slack channel. Um, we also do online webinars. We do um, um, virtual mastermind groups. It's really designed for those of us in the innovation game to come together as a community to share best practices, to share lessons learned, to, to bounce out our ideas that we're dealing with in our day-to-day -day business world of you know pitches on ideas or getting funding. And, and you need a team that's a, that's a friendly, people that understand what you're going through. The struggles of being an innovation leader is all, it's, it'll, it's the hardest job you will ever do. So check it out. It's a private Slack channel. Finding out more over at theinnovators.community and uh, check it out. Uh, there's actually uh, um, all the information is over there, including information on the mastermind group and the webinars and all those kinds of things. So you are, uh, uh, again, I can't encourage it enough. Hop on over, check that out. Uh, I'll have all the show notes for today's show, contact information for Renee, and also including information on uh, the community with links and everything over at KillerInnovations.com. And, and if you're listening to this and you're not a subscriber, check it out over on iTunes or over at uh, Google Play. And if I could just ask for one thing, post a comment wherever you get your podcast. Just give us a vote, post a comment, let us know what you think. And if there's a topic that you would like to have in a future show, drop me an email at phil at killerinnovations.com. And with that, we're going to wrap up today's show. We'll be here next week. Um, and I uh, you know, really do appreciate the time you take out of your schedule. Don't let the innovation antibodies get you down. Get out there. Take that idea of yours. Turn it into an innovation and change the world. And with that, we're going to talk to you next week. Bye-bye.